Hi, Robin with OxyDry. And today uh, is uh, actually Saturday, and uh, look how nice and sunny it is out here. But you know what? A few minutes ago it was hailing. <laughs> kind of a strange weather. And uh, got a situation going on here. The last week they've been uh, doing some work um, right around the corner from me here. They're putting in a, they're putting in a uh, right over there putting in a, uh, a filtration system for the storm drain there because the storm drain goes into the, the park right over there and uh, they're concerned about contaminants and oils that have uh, occasionally come through the storm drains and uh, so they're spending a a lot of money I guess to put in a filtration system to uh, capture any uh, contaminants that may come down the the uh, pipes and they got this they bypass the storm system uh, that's what these pumps are for here so they run all the time I can't really hear them in the house actually but anyway that's what's going on around here but anyway that's not why we're here I want to talk about the PB3 and um, I did say I wanted to get back uh, to everybody about um, how this machine performs because with my last in my last video I hadn't actually used it to do an actual job whereas now I have I did um, the other day I did two armchairs with it and uh, I just wanted to give a um, my overview of it now that I've actually used it and tell you what I think first of all my one of my concerns was I was wondering how much solution would I go through because the tank only holds three and a quarter gallons and I really didn't know what to expect. I did two armchairs, uh, two, uh, basically two armchairs and um, I used a total of one gallon. So I thought, no, that's not actually not bad, half a gallon per chair or per seat, I guess you could say. Um, so I think that I could probably do a couch and a chair probably with um, maybe three or four gallons, about, I would think. Uh, so that's not that's really not bad. Um, the uh, E600, which is sitting right over there, right there, um, it holds six gallons. But it, because of the cleaning tool that it has, it does go through um, uh, water at a, a faster rate with the uh, Sapphire Scientific tool. Um, so probably I would end up dumping and loading about about the same amount I, I think a little bit hard a little bit too early to tell that yet but I've only used the 600 and about two or three jobs now and it worked just great um, and dried very fast which brings me to the next question I wondered well how how uh, how wet would the, would this leave the fabric um, and um, one of the pieces that I did had a, uh, um, a head covering, a rectangular shape piece of the fabric that you some, we sometimes find sitting over, draped over the top of the seat um, where the head would rest. And uh, so I was able to clean that. I actually did it in two different directions. And um, I was very curious to see just how much it, the water would penetrate through or not. And the answer was uh, not, it did not penetrate through. It was a, f a little bit thicker fabric than we sometimes find. It was a, the, that particular chair was a uh, rayon cotton blend. Um, and it was a sort of a double layered kind of a fi fabric. So the type that when you get it a bit damp, the top layer will pucker a little bit. But, um, and when I finished the job, uh, the one was the rayon cotton blend. The other one was a synthetic, either an olef olefin or a, um, might have been a polyester kind of a, a bit of a velvety velvety uh, type fiber and uh, both of them felt a little bit damp when done but um, within half an hour or so I went back and checked because I did carpeting after that and within half an hour it mostly felt dry and about 45 minutes or so later other than a few spots here and there um, it really actually felt completely dry so I would say that the dry time would probably be at least on those fabrics was would definitely be under an hour um, and that was that's my goal always to um, have fabric dry within an hour um, and uh, so I, I wasn't sure how what to expect with this machine 
because um, well, I've never used it before. So, um, and in the past, many years ago, when I used to do steam cleaning, I remember we um, f fabrics would sometimes be get uh, get pretty darn wet. But mind you, um, I, I, I'm a more, much more aware of the need to make sh sure the fabrics dry faster now than I did uh, way back then. And the tools that I used back then, um, I remember using a, a Ninja, which was a 100 PSI Ninja. And um, the tool we had was basically, a, it was actually the stair, the four inch wide uh, one with the um, stair tool, or it kind of meant for stairs, I guess, actually. And it pumped out water really fast. <laughs> it wasn't the, uh, the dripless one, that's for sure. Uh, but anyway, um, actually, I remember way back then doing one that uh, that ended up bleeding, and we um, had to deal with that. <laughs> I was working for the Bay in-home cleaning back then. Anyway, um, so overall, um, I was um, the way the the machine performed. It was um, so it, it um, only used about a, ga a gallon of water. Um, the fabric wasn't saturated by any means, slightly damp when I was done. Within, an, within the hour, the fabric would have been all dry. But what was other, the other thing that was really quite interesting, and um, I wasn't really too surprised, was the fact that this thing, the heater, really, it performs fantastic. It heats up within about two minutes, and once the lines themselves, the pressure line is all warmed up, and um, you know, there's virtually no loss of temperature down the line once it's all heated up. Um, when I'm cleaning with the tool, and I pull the trigger and uh, say I was, uh, you know, up against a, an edge or something and I pull the tool along the edge, put my finger down there or whatever. I got like one second and I have to literally pull my finger away because uh, it is too, way too hot. It will burn you. So um, now I'm going to talk about the tool and I want to... Uh, I actually wanted to talk about my other one too, which is actually over here. There we go. There we go. Let's just talk about the differences here a little bit. Um, now this of course is a Sapphire Scientific tool and I did a overview on this right after I got it and um, overall this is definitely a very good tool um, it was, it's really quite easy to use um, has a, a vacuum relief right there the trigger obviously right here but you can actually lock it on or just use it as you need the water which when you're using a portable you're going to want to go that way because it can go through water rather rapidly um, um, and overall it's a it's a great tool um, if I was going to say anything about it that I find, um, I don't think I'd say that's not a bad thing exactly. It's just you got to be uh, aware that it is a little bit of a cumbersome tool. Definitely has more weight than the U.S. products tool right there, which I'll get to in a sec. Uh, and um, a lot more cumbersome for sure. Um, now the uh, PMF tool, which is this is the dripless one. Um, again, it it is uh, a little more of a bulky than the uh, US products tool right there uh, but this is a very versatile um, tool that um, a lot of people have a lot of respect for um, its advantage to this one is it will get right up to the edge and when you pull the trigger the spray is right there for you if you're up against the back of a the seat of a couch and and the, and the uh, the back it'll get right in there it's a little more um, nimble in that respect whereas even this tool doesn't quite get in there quite as well um, as the uh, PMF does uh, and this one when you get the hose on and uh, you're actually using it it again is a, a little a little stiffer and not as not as nimble as that tool right there which I'm going to get to now. So, I'll just park those over there. So this is the um, the tool 
the poster tool this machine was actually intended to be to uh, uh, it was designed for this machine I guess is what I'm trying to say and there's a few things about it that I discovered right away that I really liked first of all the uh, trigger the way that it's located there it's really easy to operate uh, and um, I'm gonna put the head on there see there and um, the tool is very light very light indeed and, and it has a, uh, a smaller hose than um, the uh, sapphire tool does has um, so that makes it again easier the pressure line in this case is on the outside which I don't have a problem with that because it's uh, strapped in there really well right right here where it ma matters and actually that's I don't know if you can see but that's actually flush in the uh, into the tool um, so I, I really liked it overall I used I primarily used this head on it but I do have other heads to choose from the other one that I used was this one and I put this on when I did the uh, back of the couch I'm gonna move this table a bit but my uh, tennis ball thing keeps hitting me <laughs> the um, so when I did the back of the couch I, I, I put this tool on and I was able to um, do the back you know faster because of the width of this tool and I wanted to show one thing about this tool now the way the way this the fan the spray comes out of here with this tool on here it actually does get right out to the edges of this tool and it does that because you see that the uh, the tool is actually lifted off the fabric now whereas when using this attachment the tool is flush with the fabric so there's no overspray at all so that's kind of handy and well thought out I, I really thought that was uh, uh, just a, a great way to go now it does have another attachment here this one here is actually meant for drapes and I guess there are certain fabrics maybe where you could also use it but it's nice to have that option this one here is similar to this one except it's a little bit wider so you just uh, snap it in place and again it actually see it it actually does push away from the main body but it still is an enclosed jet and as you're using it but I want to show you how I did use it I'll put it back together and one thing to bear in mind and I'll show you this in a minute when I turn on the machine but when and this took a little bit of uh, a couple minutes for me to um, sort of figure out the best way to use this but because of the, the jet is so far back from the front where the vacuum is when you put the tool down on the fabric and if you're not able to you see again if I'm at the this is the bottom of the, the seat of the couch and this is the back when I put the uh, tool on the couch and I pull the trigger the water is going to strike the fabric here but not up here so there's two ways to address that one would be if at all possible to go at right angles and pull it the, the, the tool that way but that's not always possible you know if you're in the corner if there's a maybe there's another side to the you know if you're going in the corner like the, right there so what you would do is you just lift the tool up pull the trigger spray onto the fabric for a brief second and then drop the tool onto the fabric and pull back so you could do it either way or whatever so it, it's not that's not a problem it just took me a couple of seconds to figure that one out so um and the, the tool does um apply the solution very well uh, covers very well um and uh it um it's just a very maneuverable tool and you can see it's got that i guess you'd call that an older style jet whereas most of our tools now have i guess they have more of the um I don't know what they call those, a T-Jet, I guess, maybe? But anyway, um, it, it really works. I, I was really quite surprised how much I liked it. I thought I was... This kind of reminds me of the tools we used to use way back. I think they called them the Mermaid tool. They were um, cast aluminum. It looked similar in style to this, and, and then there was a, um, 
kind of they were about maybe about this long or so and then the valve itself was uh, kind of the hose went in at the back here and then when you you kind of there was like a, a little um, like a pin I guess you could say and when you when you squeeze the tool the, um, the the back of the pin had a flat um, disc on it as it were and it would just sort of pivot off of the a, a seat and um, very it, I guess it worked but oh man that was a long time ago and then I remember using a tool called uh, I think it was clean right and I think they still make it and it's sort of set up similar to this one where the jet is behind the, the vacuum slots um, and, and they were considered at one point the top line tool I think I remember having one of those way back been a long time <laughs> but anyway one thing I wanted to show you on this machine which um, I forgot to mention in the past when I've talked about it is this machine does have a and by the way it is a 40 psi pump in this and I, I think I originally had said I, that it was 50 but it's actually a 40 I found a brochure on it and I'm gonna hopefully I'll be able to get to show I'll show you guys that brochure because it's really interesting to see uh, 1997 I even have the price list there so that's pretty interesting but anyway <clears throat> the um, the thing to notice about this machine is that um, it has a 40 psi pump it has a 200 degree heater works fantastically well and of course the vacuum motor and it runs on one one quart you know that's really a nice thing whereas my e600 sitting right over there um, when the heater itself is on a separate cord so this one only needs one cord um, now the other thing I wanted to show you was um, I, I knew that it did this but I didn't realize the what a difference this would make but when you turn it on it's pretty noisy but this machine is actually designed so that you can uh, run with solvent in it so you could use uh, OMS in it and uh, do dry cleaning with actual solvent and when you do that you would put an exhaust hose on it and put it out into the hallways what they say or out of the window or whatever so that you're not kind of standing right there where the exhaust is being blown in your face as it were so you can put up um, an exhaust uh, pi uh, exhaust pipe hose on the uh, on the machine and what's really neat is is I'm going to turn this thing on I'll just turn it sideways here. Just listen to the volume, the, the change in the volume here. Pretty loud, eh? That's pretty neat. neat. That's way quieter. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I'll turn on the pump. And I'll just show you the spray pattern. And how this thing... Uh, lays it down and, then, and you can see it on the cardboard I did this the other day so I'll show you how this works so this was the, the tool I mostly used on the fabric but what watch on the uh, cardboard and you'll see so I'm gonna pull it on so it gets a nice even spray um, and uh, sucks up really well so I'm gonna switch over to the other Tool that I use. That's this one. Now this was the one that would you would use probably on a big uh, flat expanse, uh, like a big one of those big condo. Up. Oh, the grief has escaped me now. Sectional. There you go. <laughs> you know those great big sectionals where you um, you want to try to uh, you've got a lot of area to clean, so you might want to switch over to this tool. So I, again, I'll, I'll put it on here. I'll pull the trigger now. In this case, the spray will actually come um, on the outside here, and I don't know if you'll, you should be able to see it in the camera, but anyway, oh, there you go, there you go, okay. So I'll turn it on, and I'll pull it toward me, just like that. I'll do it over here, because I was on the, the uh, tape there. You see just how wide it goes. So the, the width of the tool is here to here, and watch on the cardboard when I pull it past. like that <coughs> so my other point was when getting up to the edge so if I pull the put the tool up to the edge and I pull the trigger you can see that it 
doesn't get up to all the way up to the to the back side. So you could do it like by doing it this way by lifting the tool and then pull it away. That would work just fine too. So anyway, that was uh, those are the things that I learned about the tool um, and the and the machine. So it dried. It was didn't use very much water. Um, I figure about a uh, half a gallon for an armchair. Uh, dried really fast, did not penetrate through the fabric. Uh, dried within, probably would dry within under an hour, I would say, in most fabrics, I would expect. Uh, and um, very maneuverable tool, very, uh, um, I mean, a lot of different options for attachments here, so that I think will make it really easy when doing different types of fabrics and styles of furniture. So overall, I really like this, this tool. I really like the machine. I'm looking forward to using it uh, more. And um, I, have, I have a feeling I may prefer it over my E600, which is nothing wrong with it. It's just quite a bit bulkier and heavier. This thing is 46 pounds, by the way. And I'm actually just um, figuring out a way to be able to go into a condo building with it. I'm gonna take that little collapsible uh, dolly there and uh, I just need to build up on the bottom there a bit so that it'll fit under the under this machine. I'll be able to just lift it up easily and just roll it along because um, it just doesn't, it's not quite right to, to roll it on its wheels. That would be too hard on it, I think, and a little bit too awkward. And I want to be able to carry the machine and then the hoses and uh, a bucket and things like that when I go in to do a condo, if I'm doing some furniture in a condo unit. So I'll turn this off. What I want to do now is I'm going to give you guys a real treat. You're going to like this. <laughs> Especially you guys have been around a while. Because I'm going to show you a bit of history. So. Let me just put that aside. This is the brochure that um, I guess it came with this machine. Put that aside there. Uh, so let's go look through here, because I'm sure you're curious. There's the PB3, of course. And, uh, oh, this was 97, I think. There's a price list on here, I believe it said 97. Let me just double check. I'm pretty sure that's what we have. Where did it go? Somewhere on here I had a, at a year. Uh, we'll get to it. I'm pretty sure it's 97. So, uh, a few years ago now, eh? A um, little bit about the tool. And I actually used one of these. Um, I'll get to that in a sec. Oh, well, there it is, the Cobra. I worked for a guy for a while and he had a Cobra. And it was a great machine. And it had a heater in it too. There's some information on the PB3, and of course there's, they're talking there about the drapery cleaning, or showing it anyway. Uh -huh. uh, more details on the PB3, if you're interested, you can stop the video and take a good look at that. That's the HHP extractor. I'm not sure what the difference is between those ones and these ones over here, the Cobra. Uh, maybe it's just uh, it's 12 gallon. Um, this is 10 gallon. Hmm. Um, and their carpet dyer, which I guess is basically like a it's just got a pump in there, I guess, in the big tank for dyeing carpeting. And their inline heater. And of course, their fan and some of the miscellaneous stuff. There's the four-in-one upholstery drapery tool and there some of their wands and and accessories and there's their um, scrubber tool for fabric which I remember seeing these many years ago I've never seen it actually seen one anyone using one and US products makes a great shampoo tank I actually have one I've used them over the years a few of them and I think one of my machines still has one of their tanks on it Great machine, or great uh, tank, I mean. Um, here's, uh, oh, there's their dry cleaning product right there. 
um, other products and something about the rotational molding stuff <laughs> and I think this is the same thing oh not quite let me see if we got anything else in here uh, it's a different a little bit different brochure I think this one shows a little more about the drapery cleaning here pictures stainless steel coil in the heat uh, heat exchanger I think they were one of the I think they were one of the first companies that had the circuit locator built into the machines which was very handy I remember when I was using the Cobra uh, working for a guy did a, he did a lot of commercial stuff and it was really helpful to have that so you wouldn't uh, and, um, accidentally end up on the same circuit with two cords which is tripping breakers is no fun of course there's the the uh, upholstery tool again a little more info on the uh, hot box I, I think that they still make this thing I'm not sure uh, nothing new there and nothing new there okay um, Okay, I'll zoom in on this if you want to stop and read the article here. If you can make it out. And um, here's the interesting thing. Oh, there you go. T97. So we have... Uh, what is a PSA? Oh, it was on unit. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure what the difference is between PSA and SC, but anyway, whatever. Uh, look at the prices. Um, hmm. Oh, here's the uh, PB3, which um, this price is $29.95. And then the XLT60, which is the same as the PB3, but has a doesn't have the stainless tank doesn't have the ability to uh, clean with solvent has a 60 psi um, diaphragm pump so it's a little bit different and also a little less money as you can see there's the upholstery tool and its accessories and things like that um, upholstery scrub head there's the hhp machine the cobra no heat and then with heat 100 psi hmm. the shampoo tank uh, there's the hot box again and uh, the four care products let's see what else i got here that's from a vacuum store so i won't even bother showing you that we got here is um, talking about the uh, PB3 and uh, why it's such a great machine. Uh, draper cleaning, they're going into that. I don't think I would do drapes, but I could, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, the crushed velvet. You can do the crushed velvets with these uh, with the solvent. Not that we actually see crushed velvet much anymore. We used to 30 years ago, but. Hmm. They're a pain in the butt to do. Um, solvent, 125 degrees. Yeah, talking about the solvent. Hmm. Uh, I haven't really read this. Might re re make great detail. So, anyway, I think this this training video is, by the way, is on YouTube. You can go and watch it so far. <laughs> they were selling it for $87.95. Now it's on YouTube. Pretty sure it is anyway. Um, this is... Uh, I wonder if Bernie's still around. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see what else. Anyway, you can stop the video. And if you want to read this article, maybe there's something interesting and useful in here. I don't know. I actually haven't read it yet. mostly about draperies there oh here we go here's the XLT 60 which is the um, PB3 with the it doesn't have a stainless tank 
it does have a heater it's a 200 and, uh, what are they, 212 degree uh, heater and uh, 60 psi diaphragm pump I think it says so right here there it is right there um, so if you weren't wanting to do solvent cleaning but you found this was a good good machine to choose from and I think it is actually you know my my experience with the um, with the PB3 so far is I mean I I wouldn't have a problem using that machine all the time um, I've yet to do a great big job with it so maybe uh, that would drive me crazy I don't know um, depends how much I'd fill and dump it um, would it be faster than the Von Schrader that is or slower that's a good question um, because with the Von Schrader, of course, I have to scrub with the cleaning head and then do a separate vacuum extraction with the vacuum. Um, whereas with this machine, most of the most of the time, it's just going to be a straight um, cleaning with the with the head trigger on. Um, so I suspect it might actually be faster. The only question is how much do I dump and fill? Um, I'm really curious to figure that one out. Um, would it clean better? Well, I'm not sure. Again, um, but it does have that 200 degree heat, and that really makes a difference when you're dealing with, with oily, um, fat, you know, things where the on the arms and where the head rubs and all. So, and more info on the uh, on the uh, Cobra and the HHP. Uh, look at this. This I noticed this before. A 300 psi pump and it's adjustable hmm that's actually pretty cool I never heard of a 300 psi pump I've heard of 100 150 200 and then of course the other ones would be 500 and up but I've never heard of a 300 so that's interesting this one's a hundred this one's 300 140 inches of water left this one is dual motors, 150 inches of lift. It's a 100 psi pump. Hmm. Anyway, that's uh, interesting. Oh, here's some more info on the HHP. Oh my goodness, look at that! It's a 310 psi pump. Very interesting. I know nothing about these machines except that I did use a Cobra many years ago. We're talking like 30 years ago, and it did work really well. Um, I did. I had no problem with it. Um, that's a floor finish, something or other. I'm not, I'm not interested in that anyway. Um, this is their ozone generator. Seems to me they were one of the first ones that were really pushing the ozone generators. I think but that was a, a long time ago. Um, this is some. Um, so what the thermal shield. What do we got here? Oh, more thermal shield. Oh, thermal finish. Okay, that was it. I thought you might be interested to see that and learn about what I uh, I had learned in using this machine. Again, I, I'm really liking it. I love it. Just so compact. As long as um, um, the dry time is under an hour, in most cases, that's that'll be great because that's right in line with my Von Schrader right there. Um, and... Um, uh, they they do sell these machines, I believe. They're about $2,500 now. So um, I don't know of anybody else really that owns one. Uh, but if there's anybody out there that does know much about these machines and you'd like to just add your two cents um, in the comments, then I'm sure there's lots of other people who'd be interested in hearing about these machines because maybe they're an alternative for us low-moisture guys. Um, you know, because getting a big extractor is not always the best way to go and if you're uh, limited in space then this machine might be the this might be the answer so anyway that's my thoughts on it and uh, hopefully it'll uh, this will entertain and educate some of uh, you guys out there that um, want to know about these machine machines oh by the way I don't know if I know mentioned but it does have an hour meter and it's got 734 hours on it now and um, I did change the carbon brushes I mentioned this before and when I checked them, they were almost done. And uh, I did a quick search on uh, average lifespan of a Land Motor, and um, the uh, specs said 
that they usually last about 700 hours. <laughs> so the carbons were just about gone. So they were due to be replaced right there. And so they got, it's got brand new carbons. And as long as the bearings are good, it should last for quite a long time yet. Um, it's the carbons where all the wear happens, of course. So uh, anyway, I'll let you go. And I'll uh, continue on with my little project to get this thing uh, more mobile for condo buildings. So anyway, have a good day.